Numbers chapter 20. We'll be looking at verses 1 through 13. Read along with me in your Bibles. And the people of Israel, the whole congregation, came into the wilderness of Zin in the first month, and the people stayed in Kadesh. And Miriam died there and was buried there. Now there was no water for the congregation, and they assembled themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And the people quarreled with Moses and said, Would that we had perished when our brothers perished before the Lord? Why have you brought this assembly of the Lord into this wilderness, that we should die here, both we and our cattle? And why have you made us come up out of Egypt to bring us to this evil place? It is no place for grain or figs or vines or pomegranates, and there is no water to drink. Then Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly to the entrance of the tent of the meeting and fell on their faces. And the glory of the Lord appeared to them. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the staff and assemble the congregation, you and Aaron, your brother, and tell the rock before their eyes to yield its water. So you shall bring water out of the rock for them and give drink to the congregation and their cattle. And Moses took the staff from before the Lord as he commanded him. Then Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock. And he said to them, Hear now, you rebels! Shall we bring water for you out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand and struck the rock with his staff twice. And water came out abundantly. And the congregation drank and their livestock. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not believe in me to uphold me as holy in the eyes of the people of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land that I have given them. These are the waters of Meribah, where the people of Israel quarreled with the Lord, and through them he showed himself holy. Heavenly Father, speak to our hearts once again. Open, open them up to, so that we can see, we can see what's going on here, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would just teach us. Fill this room with your Spirit. Silence anything in our hearts that gets in the way of what we have to remember when we come between a rock and a hard place. And Lord, may you receive the glory for this. Amen. Please take your seats. Some things to remember when you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. This being Memorial Day weekend, and it's full of remembrances, especially about, about our soldiers, all, all who have died on uh, behalf of their country, given the ultimate sacrifice. Let, let, let me set it up here, what's going on. It is the first month of the 40th year after the Exodus, and these tribes have come to Kadesh. Now, Kadesh is a well-known, well-watered oasis. Okay, So they come there for a purpose, knowing that, what it, that when it comes to their needs, for water, that this oasis is well supplied. Okay? And once again, something happens in their lives and they start to turn and they start to complain about, to Moses about what's going on. Okay? 
And they don't remember. This is a weekend of remembering. And they don't remember how God has led them over and over and over again through all the trials and all of the circumstances. They complain again. And I got to thinking, you know, remembering people and different things. And my son, said, Jimmy, said something to me the other day. We were having baseball practice, his first practice for, for the upcoming season. It's been so wet that none of the teams have been able to practice. And finally we had, and uh, Thursday night, Thursday night we had practice at 7 o'clock. You know what it did at 6 o'clock Thursday night? It poured. It poured. And so the DRC I, uh, called and said, you can practice on the outfield grass, but you can't go on the infield. Um, okay, and, and the outfield was just soaked, but... We did it anyway. But uh, Jimmy seems to be a, a, a pretty decent catcher. I was a catcher all the years that I played ball. And I love to catch because, because you, can see, you can see the whole field and, and you know what, you can, you can see what's going on and, and you're in charge. And when you see a professional game on TV, the catcher, he's in charge. He, he's in charge out there. He, he tells the outfielders, move in, move over, move out. You know, he tells the pitcher what to throw and stuff. And Jimmy said something to me. He says, you know, Dad, he says, uh, Jimmy doesn't like to catch a whole lot. And, and, and I understand. And he says, you know what, what other position is really fun to play? What would you tell me? Second base. Second base. And it was in this month. In 1968, that, that on the Little League team that I was playing, that changed my life, that I've never forgotten. It, uh, um, I shared with you the Little League that I played in, in, uh, in 1967, we went to the World Championship and lost to Tokyo in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. So we were com- the, the Little League was coming off a real high you know you know and this 1968 season was starting i know some of you weren't even born then but that's okay that's okay so the 68 season was starting out you know we had such a good the whole league was just really excited and uh i was a catcher on the on the team and we had kind of a tall well for 12 years old or whatever kind of a tall lanky guy well all arms and legs you know the you know the kids that that are growing but yet they don't have quite the coordination yet and 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 he played second base for our team and uh i get my parents get a call one day and the second baseman's name was dennis and dennis he was 12 and just a nice kid and my parents got a call one day, and uh, this was during the season, and said, uh, there's been an accident. And uh, Dennis tried to ride his bike over a set of railroad tracks and didn't see the train coming. And I thought, oh, you got to be, wow. You know, you know, it's one of your teammates. And, you know, so one of the things that I remember then is, uh, well, two things is going to his wake. And we all had our little league uniforms on. And then they asked me to take his spot at second base. So second base does, it, it, means, it means a little bit more special to me because what the Lord allowed me to do and it's something that I always remember about Little League and playing second base was I'm the one that had to take Dennis's place and uh, you know we remember things especially this weekend whether it's uh, somebody in the service or a family member 
I told you a story about my, my third cousin being on the Arizona when it went down. You know, remembering things. I, I want you to get this point here. God has blessed the Israelites with leaving Egypt. And over and over and over again, they forget what he's done for them the whole way. And because of their disobedience, they have wandered for 40 years. And still they, they come to a place in Kadesh that is supposed to be that is well known to be well watered because they're thirsty, they've got to drink, they've got to feed their cattle, they've got to let their cattle have water, and there's nothing there. Okay, And they start to complain. So, I want you to think about this, about remembering. Here are some things to remember when you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Talking about just kind of paralleling here what's going on with this rock. What's, what's the big deal about a rock? Well, hopefully we are going to find out here. So they come there. Miriam dies. Okay. Moses' sister passes away. She's buried there. Okay. So here we go. You got your notes? You ready to go? Okay. Some things to remember when you're stuck between a rock and, and a hard place. Okay? Number one, complaining never gets anyone anywhere. Verses 1 through 5. The people of Israel, the whole congregation, came into the wilderness of Zin in the first month. And the people stayed in Kadesh, and Miriam died there and was buried there. And there was no water for the congregation. They assembled themselves together against Moses and Aaron. And they quarreled with Moses. I'm just kind of paraphrasing this. They said, would, we that, had, would, would that we had perished when our brothers perished before the Lord? Why have you brought this assembly into this wilderness that we should die here, both we and our cattle? And why have you made us come up out of Egypt to bring us to this evil place? It's no place for grain, nor figs, nor vines, or pomegranates. And I'll tell you what, Moses, there's no water to drink. Okay? And when they talk about, see, there was a whole bunch of people a whole bunch of their sisters and brothers that died back in Korah, back in Numbers 16. In fact, they even dared to suggest that saying, would we not have been better to just have, been, have died with them? Oh, I'll tell you what, how, how are they doing so far when it comes to remembering all what God has done for them? Not too good. And one thing that we have that we have tried to teach our children in our family, and especially when it comes to complaining, whiners get nothing. So you can whine, you can bellyache, you can do all you want. In fact, some of my kids, they can put on a really, really good poopy face. They get nothing. Nothing. So Meribah, the where where they're at means quarreling, and on your notes there it said it it is. This is more serious than just complaining. It is directed. It is intentional. It is well argued. So hey Moses, see because your text says they all assembled together. So you know what they all planned this out. I'll tell you what. You know what we're going to do. We're going to go talk. To the guy in charge, because you know what? We are ticked off because there's no water here. And our cattle are going to die. Oh, and by the way, we're thirsty too. One of the references there from Philippians 2.14 is do all things without grumbling or questioning. Okay? So they, they intentionally quarreled with Moses, saying, I'll tell you what, would we not have been better... To just die before. In fact, they even got the guts to say, 
Why would the Lord bring us, they're talking about the promised land, why would the Lord bring us to this evil place? The promised land. Really thankful. But you know what? Complaining never gets anyone anywhere. Never. And, 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 and it's one thing, one of the things that we need to remember when we're stuck. And there's some of you sitting here today that God is working in your heart in some spiritual battle that you're having on that you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. You don't know quite know which way to go. You don't know quite know what to do with this. Well, maybe this will help you. But I try to put this into effect with not only how I lead my family, but how I've led my sports teams, and yes, how even I lead here. Let me just warn you, whiners get nothing. Still love you. Whiners get nothing. Okay? So number one, complaining never gets anyone anywhere. Number two, reverently, when you're stuck between a rock and a hard place, reverently seek the Lord's counsel, which is what Moses and Aaron do. Six through nine. Then Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly into the entrance of the tent of meeting and fell on their faces. That's how come I put reverently. Okay? They fell on their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared to them. And the Lord spoke to Moses. What did he tell them? Hey, take the staff, assemble the congregation, you and Aaron, your brother, tell the rock before their eyes to yield its water. So you shall bring water out of the rock for them and give drink to all of them and their cattle. Moses took the staff from before the Lord as he commanded. Okay? Reverently, when you're stuck between a rock and a hard place, seek the Lord's counsel. Why? He says, I love those. Look at Proverbs 18, 17. I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently find me. Okay? But think about this. Okay? Moses' his instruction was, speak, and it's going to give the water. Okay? But think about this as believers. Believers, we have a permanent counsel ministry of the Holy Spirit. He's always there. John fourteen sixteen, Jesus said, And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another helper to be with you forever. I was reading in my uh, devotional this morning. Remember... Uh, you see sometimes on the on the TV shows and comic books. Remember the Flintstones? Do they still make those or are they all kind of reruns or whatever? Remember remember the the name of the thing from outer space that used to speak to Fred? Huh? Spell it say it. Kazoo. It would kind of help them out. Remember? And then you've seen the TV shows where, you know, you, you know there, there's a war going on, so there's a devil that kind of appears. You like the Flintstones, don't you? <laughs> you know, and, you know, there, and, 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 and there's this war going on, and they'll superimpose an angel on one shoulder, and, and you know, the angel oh, be sweet, do, 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 do. and then you, you got the devil, and it's like, ah, you know. Like, like it would help the person decide what to do. But we've got the Holy Spirit. Permanently. That once you become a believer in Jesus Christ and accept Him as your personal Savior, the Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us. Okay? It leads us into the truth for personal holiness and to discern God's will. And you know what? When you're stuck between a rock and a hard place, even if you're trying to make a decision in life, whether it's with a job or career or marriage, the Holy Spirit guides us 
to the biblical principles to be applied in the Scriptures. And, you know, so many times, you know what, oh, you know, you know, you hear people, oh, I, you know what, I just don't know what to do. I, you know, I, what, what job, you know, what, well, you know what, that's what the Holy Spirit does. It, it guides us and he teaches us. And always, 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 it, it'll, it'll, it'll be the truth that's in the Word of God. Always. And it's permanent. It's like, oh, hello, are you there? No, he's always there. But you know what? One, one of the things that when we're stuck, when we're stuck between a rock and a hard place, the Holy Spirit raises the red flag in your heart when you're not doing what you should be doing. Part of His ministry is to just lay it upon our heart. You know what? That's not God's way. That's the struggle between a rock and a hard place. You know who the rock is? Nobody? Huh? The rock? The rock is our salvation. Let me just take it one step further. You know who the hard place is? We are. You ever been stuck between a rock and a hard place? The battle between you and what the Lord is telling you? Let me tell you, reverently seek the Lord's counsel. These guys got on their faces and sought the Lord's counsel. Number three, don't take matters in, into your own hands. So what did they do? They got instructions. This is what I want you to do. Hey guys, all I want you to do is, Moses, speak to the rock. That's it. Oh, picture you walking up there. The whole, here, the whole assembly like here is gathered. And there's a rock right here. And I just look over there and I say, yo, rock. That's all he had to do. That's it. Sounds pretty simple to me. Instead, what does he do? He, he takes his staff. Boom, boom. Okay. Don't take matters in uh, to your own hands. Here we go. Verses 10 and 11. Then Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock, and, and he said to them, Hear now. Now, now this, is, this is so cool. He says, Hear now, you rebels. Shall we bring water for you out of this rock? And he lifted up his hand and struck the rock with his staff twice. And water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their livestock. Okay. The text there, one of the references, is trust in, in, in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. The word rebels there is a harsh address saying, in essence, in the Hebrew, Moses is saying, here, if I was looking at all of you saying, must I, must we do this? Have you lost your faith? And actually, Moses is at the breaking point of patience. He's at the breaking point of patience. Moses, for some reason, wasn't, you know what? He wasn't satisfied with what God told him. Can you think about this? Have you ever come to a point when you're struggling with a problem or else there's something going on within your heart that that you are just struggling with. And the Word of God gives you the answer. It gives you the answer. And you know, you know how I feel about that. 
that the Bible speaks authoritatively to every issue of life. And God gives you the answer, and then you say, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. No, 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 no. No, no. You don't want me to do that. You're not satisfied with God's answer. You'd rather be between the rock and the hard place. The reference here, 1 Timothy 6, 11, But as for you, O man of God, flee these things. As Paul is trying to encourage Timothy, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, quotations, patience, gentleness. Man, how you doing so far? You stuck? You stuck between a rock and a uh, hard place? Well, I'll tell you what, complaining never gets anyone anywhere. Have you reverently seeked or sought the Lord's counsel? Or have you decided to take matters into your own hands? Okay. Number four. The Lord holds you responsible for your actions. What happens? We all know the story. Let me read for you. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not believe me, to uphold me as holy in the eyes of the people of Israel. Therefore, you shall not bring this assembly into the land that I have given them. These are the waters of Meribah, where the people of Israel quarreled with the Lord. Through them he showed himself holy. The Lord holds you responsible. That, ladies and gentlemen, and, and, and I... We don't get away with nothing. Nobody gets away with nothing. Whether it's doing something, whether it's thinking something wrong, nothing. Especially, hear me when I say this, especially leaders. Whether it's husbands, fathers, wives, mothers, workers, you name it. Whatever the Lord has you doing in, as a ministry, you don't get away with nothing. No one does. No one. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 4, 4, For I am not aware of anything against me, against myself, but I am not thereby acquitted. It is the Lord who judges me. Because he didn't show the God is holy separate, distinct. Okay? Instead, think about this. If I was to walk down here and say, okay, Rock, go. Because God said so. Would you think God was a wonderful, gracious, kind, holy, that, yeah, yeah. I would. What would you think if I just walked up here and I took my hockey stick and I went, whack, whack, there, have your water. Would you see God as gracious and holy and kind? Or would, you, or would I give you the impression that God was mean? Moses was to show how merciful, loving, gracious God was, but instead he gave the people the impression of hostility. Okay? Attempting to solve our problems or satisfy our desires apart from the Lord's counsel demonstrates a lack of faith. It demonstrates a lack of faith. Proverbs 3, 7 says... Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. So here, here, it's, it, it comes down to this. We're either going to trust Him, trust Him enough to obey Him, or reject it and try something else. That's the rock in the hard place. The rock of our salvation, our Lord, He's the rock. And the hard place is the hard heads and the hard hearts that we have. 
And we get stuck in between that. How many times have you thought that you know better than God? Oh, but God, yeah, you know what, I know, I know you say that, but you know what, I, I just, I just, I just don't see, and I, I just, I, 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 I. You know that we love to solve problems ourselves. We do. And God used his judging of Moses to ensure his holiness to his people. Did you get that? God used the judging of Moses to ensure his holiness to his people. Can't take him in now. That's it. So where are you today? Are you stuck? You're stuck between a rock and a hard place? What's the spiritual battle going on within your heart? If I can ask each and every one of you to bow your head and close your eyes. Um, Can I ask you these questions? Are you done complaining? Are you? Are you reverently seeking the Lord's counsel? You know, the Lord holds you responsible for your actions if you take matters into your own hands. He does. I'm going to let you silently go before the Lord right now. Get out from being stuck and head towards the rock. Heavenly Father, we come before you because each, each and every one of us tries to figure things out for ourselves. Each and every one of us are in circumstances right now that we know we're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Lord, help us to reverently seek you to stop our complaining, our grumbling. Help us not to take matters into our own hands, knowing that you are going to discipline us if we do. I pray for each and every heart here, especially mine, that you would change us. To mold us into the believers you need us to be. And may you receive the glory for that, Lord, forever and ever. Amen.